As children, when we would watch television or movies, if something bad or scary happened, a lot of us would get told to close or cover our eyes. Those that told us this did it with the best intentions, but also created a habit that we have formed as a collective, as adults. Instead of explaining what it was we were not meant to see and perhaps giving context or reassurance, we were taught to simply avoid it. In the 21st century, we have become extremely efficient. We have communication in our hands at all times, which gives us access to everything we could ever need. We have social media, which means we can express our thoughts in 280 characters or less. We can even meme and express an entire thought in just one image. It also conveniently makes it very easy to avoid the bad and scary things we were trained to as children. If something negative comes up on your feed, you can mute it or block it. You can watch as many puppy and kitten videos as you like. In fact, you can curate your life so that you never have to see anything that makes you uncomfortable, ever. But what does this mean for the world outside that we seem to be ignoring? Ironically, the problems of the world drive us further and further into our phones, into games, into distraction. We cannot be alone with our own minds because we are too stimulated and too addicted to the high, to face the lows outside let alone feel any kind of compassion or empathy that would move us to do anything about it. This has its consequences. For example, I am a survivor of rape. I was drugged and raped when I was 19 years old by a celebrity who is still on TV in the Philippines to this day. If you'll notice when I mention rape, I'm sure a lot of you have your own preconceived thoughts on the matter whether you are aware of it or not. We have for generations been fed so many ideas when it comes to rape, most of which portray rapists as shady looking characters lurking in dark alleyways, preying on women who have chosen to be somewhere they shouldn't be. Let's not forget about the abundance of porn on the internet nowadays that glorifies rape and gives young people a completely absurd, unhealthy and unrealistic view on sex, which is helping perpetuate the mentality that people are asking for it or saying no when they really mean yes. In the interest of education, I would like you all to picture this. Someone has stolen your cell phone. All your private information is on there. All your pictures, passwords, banking details, work emails, personal phone numbers, all of it, your whole life and someone has taken it. But after a few hours, they give it back with no explanation as to why they stole it, what they've seen, what information they may have taken, what intimate details of your life they have been privy to. And you got your phone back. So should you really complain? Even though you feel as though your life has been violated and that possibly damage done to your finances, privacy, and security. Now imagine the phone is you, and that being stolen is someone taking advantage of you. Imagine that when you told someone that your phone was stolen, they said to you, well, you must have been asking for it. Unfortunately, this is the reality rape victims all over the world face every single day. Culturally speaking, in the Philippines, we have been taught to turn a blind eye to rape. This stems partially from our old rape law, this law stated that rape was a crime against chastity, which meant that if you were not a virgin at the time of your rape, it was considered your fault. Even though this law was changed in 1997, the mentality of the majority of Filipinos have not, because how many ordinary citizens are really aware about updates in the law? When I was raped, I was torn apart. I had woken up confused, alone, a teenager who suddenly had to decide what she was going to do about having been raped. Just a few months before, I had been hired onto a noontime variety show. I was on TV every day live from Monday to Saturday with millions of viewers across the Philippines. I was on billboards, magazines. I took pictures with thousands of people. 
and suddenly here I was alone, raped, wishing only to wash the smell of this man's unwelcome saliva off of my body. When I finally had the guts to open up to a fellow celebrity about what had happened, she revealed that it had also happened to her in the same manner by another celebrity. She said, if you speak about it, you won't work in the industry ever again. So what did I do as really still a grown up child do? I closed my eyes. I did what I had to do. I had to keep myself safe. I hoped that maybe I was a mistake. Maybe he would never do it again. Maybe I was okay. Maybe I could just get over it and walk away. I stayed quiet and my career thrived. I ended up working for MTV and hosting concerts for Beyonce, Rihanna and Chris Brown, among others. More billboards, more magazines, more autographs, more fans. All the while, in every picture, in every smile, holding on to this incredibly painful secret. Then one day, nine years later, I find out that three other women have come out and claim to have been raped by the same man. What was I supposed to do? Should I allow these women to continue being slandered and ridiculed on social media and in the press being called fame whores and attention seekers and liars? What were the chances these stories were true knowing that he had in fact raped me? So I did the unthinkable and I stood up. I opened my eyes and more than that, I spoke up. I stood up for them, telling people that they had no idea who a rapist could be or what the truth was. You see, people have a hard time believing that someone is a rapist because they seem to believe rapists are a rarity, that they are somewhat of a mythical creature like a fairy or an elf and that public figures or people they know couldn't possibly be these things. The hardest thing of all is when friends or associates of rapists cannot believe the person they know would have done this. I tell people, you never really know a person unless you have seen them become sexually aroused. You would never know a predator unless you are the object of their sexual desire or fetish. I've heard people say on many occasions, I've hung out with him, but he's never raped me. But ask yourself, are you attracted to every single person in the room? Rapists are human beings. They have a type. People also believe that rape is just aggressive sex and that it couldn't possibly be unpleasant because sex is a pleasurable thing. Let me tell you, there is nothing pleasant about non-consensual sex. Let's not forget also that rape is really about power as well. Part of the thrill of it for many predators is the fact that they have control over their victims and that there is nothing they can do. Conquest without consequence. You cannot walk into someone's home and do what you like with it. Yet somehow, if people do the same to someone's body, it is not really taken seriously. This mentality infuriated me and I ended up speaking up about having been raped myself, even though I had not intended to, just to show people that anyone can be raped. In the blink of an eye, all these memories and feelings and emotions I had been feeling for so long were now in the public eye for everyone to see. Instead of feeling liberated or heard, Suddenly I was canceled before canceling was even a thing. Thousands of people telling me I was a fame whore, that I was a prostitute who deserved to be raped, that I was just looking for a way to stay relevant in today's fame obsessed climate. I was forcing them to open their eyes and they hated me for it. And sure enough, just as my friend had told me all those years ago, I did not work in that industry again. Imagine telling someone your phone was stolen and them saying you deserved it or you were just looking for attention, even if they didn't know the full details of what had happened. And think about what it would be like if for speaking your truth, you couldn't work again. After that, I retreated into myself. 
I sank into a very deep depression and loneliness as many people in my life could not handle the magnitude of what was happening to me. I could not understand what kind of world I had woken up to where the man who had raped me was celebrated and those who he had raped were destroyed. As time went on, one of the only things I could do to help anything was keep speaking up about what had happened to me. Many people told me to keep quiet, to leave the country, to stop talking about it because nobody cared. But I cared. I was angry. What was happening was not fair. But nobody was really listening, or even if they were listening, they didn't want to do anything about it because it didn't affect them directly. They wanted to close their eyes, go back to being happy. The only people who cared about what I was saying were other victims. And my goodness, how many victims did I meet? In the Philippines, there is a rape reported every 53 minutes, and that is only a fraction of the real number. 70% of all rapes are children under the age of 14. At the moment, over 2 million children are being sexually exploited online for profit. I met a woman who was raped at gunpoint by her husband repeatedly over 19 years before she escaped him. A mother whose three-year-old was raped by his own father. A young woman who was being kidnapped, tortured, and raped repeatedly by a man who was threatening to release nude pictures of her online. I have heard stories from people from all different backgrounds, many of them telling me stories of when they were three, two, five, eight years old, all ages, with the perpetrators being those closest to them, their co-workers, friends, relatives, fathers, brothers, cousins. Very few of them were raped by strangers, and almost none of them had ever been able to get any kind of justice. And what does that mean? Does that not logically mean that we are surrounded by predators? They could be anywhere, and in actual fact, they are everywhere. The man who raped me is not any type of particular man. He is just a person who saw something that he wanted and took it without consent. There are people out there doing this all the time without fear because they know that everybody has their eyes closed. You might ask, why is this my problem? I've never been raped, nor do I know anyone who has been, so what? Isn't it the job of the victims to fight this? PTSD from rape is very real. In fact, the trauma experienced by victims has been compared to that of soldiers who have been to war. You see, rape is not a natural thing. It is not something we are taught to deal with nor talk about. When one experiences it, it changes them forever. Depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, anger, dissociation from oneself, separation from friends and family, not to mention being ridiculed and poo-pooed by people who have no idea what they are talking about. In war, do we send those who have been injured to fight for us? No. We send able-bodied men, those who have not yet felt the stings of war, to stand strong against the enemy, whether you like it or not, these predators are out there and it is only a matter of time before you or someone you know is touched by this awful crime. And that is what it is, a crime that we are still not paying enough attention to. Now, I am not here to tell you to go out and be an anti-rape champion. In fact, perhaps after my speech, the issue of rape still doesn't move you at all. And that's okay but I am here to ask you to start to open your eyes. Even if you are not a victim of rape, statistically speaking, there are people either side of you who are. For those of you who have been through what I went through, what I did, it was scary. I went to hell and back after I spoke up. But I want you to know to speak is to take back your power. To speak is to heal your tired soul. To find your voice after what has happened to you will be one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself. But even if having peace means to never speak of it, I beg you, do whatever it takes. 
for you to heal. No predator deserves to take the rest of your life from you. You might think, how do I heal? How can I possibly even start to feel better after what was done to me? When I was alone in the aftermath, I began to paint. All I had was a few bottles of paint and brushes and I created things that I wanted to see on the outside that I could not seem to feel within. From this, I made a yoga mat brand. I used it to survive when things were the worst for me. It gave me peace at a time when I could find none. And guess what my slogan is? Reignite yourself. It has taken me almost 20 years to heal from what happened to me. But if I can do it, so can you. Thank you.